Now for the thrilling adventures of Lightning Jim. I won't stay back here. Let me out at once, you hear? Let me out, I tell you. Oh, quiet down, Bell. I won't stay back here with this yowling pack of coyotes, I tell you. I won't. I won't. I won't. Let me out of here. Oh, for heaven's sake, pipe down, Bell. This is the Fort Anderson jail you're in, not that fancy reformatory you were at last time. Yeah. <laughs> they ain't got no special ladies department here, Bill. Yeah, oh, God, right, you yeah. dirty, dulcet sidewinder, you. Take that. Come on, Bill. Oh, my God. The fur in one of them boots of yours down there took me here off. You're just lucky I wasn't inside those boots. Yeah. Join them into your face, Jake Luda. Instead of just throwing him. It was your loose, running, double tossing tongue that got us all behind bars. And if you don't watch out, I'll do some talking that'll get you measured for a hip neck tie. Yeah, and a six foot spread on boot here. Yeah, yeah, it was Jake that cold us us all into the marshal's trap. Shut up, all of you. Uh, You're all tied with the same brush as Jake. The only difference between you and a pack of cold cats. There's a strike down your back, a yellow and shut out white. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, yellow and a yard wide. Oh, yeah, 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 shut up! Yeah, shut up! Yeah, shut up. Yeah, shut up. Yeah, Let me out of here! Let me out of here! Lightning Jim and Whitey have just returned to their headquarters at Fort Anderson following a successful adventure down in Indian Territory where they managed to capture the notorious woman bandit Belle Star and date of the outlaws riding under her leadership. And now we find Whitey reclining in the comfortable depths of an armchair, shoes off, feet resting on a convenient table, chuckling over a bit of gossip in the local newspaper. <laughs> Storm coming up, Whitey. Better close them windows. Oh, you're a coach. Yeah. yeah. Sure, laid off my mind knowing Bell Star's locked up good and tight, I can tell you that. Good, like, you don't mean to tell me that you got worried over what the Bell said about the sleeping, do you? <laughs> well, I reckon it is kind of foolish, Whitey, to let her brag and bother me. But you know her record for luck. But all the time she had been sentenced to jail, the only time that woman ever left the prison by the front door was when her and Sam did that trick at the Detroit Reformatory last year. You remember that? Oh, yo, I know all that, Lightning. But don't you forget that she has never been our prisoner before. Yeah, I reckon you're right, Whitey. We've got a long record of good luck ourselves. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, you're good to be home, dear. <laughs> Everything's so quiet and peaceful. Hey, hey, Whitey. You gotta take a look at this sky, will you? Sure. Hey, them thoughts, they, they look just like my divorce. Sir. Sure do. My son is like them. That's the way the sky looks this time. We was in a tornado up in Iowa. Yeah. Know? Hey, look, Whitey, off there in the distance. That well and dust. It is a tornado, my guy. Sure, and it's coming through just me. See, we, we better get down in the shed. I'll tell you, Ed. Come on, hurry up. Oh, it's all for the ship, sir. Come on, buddy. Open up. Get to work, buddy. Hey, Lightning. 
Can you move off the list? This baby knows you. Put the horse ball on me. Without you, you beat me. Let me. Let me answer me. Let me. You all right, Whitey? Sure, oh, I'm all right. We'll head this lead in. I, I saw that Joyce was going to hit you, Whitey. Thought I could catch it and break the blow with my shoulder, but wasn't fast enough, I reckon. Stopped it with my head and my head. Oh. oh, that's why you threw yourself and talked to me. Why did you do that last thing? Why did you risk yourself for me? Why, well, nothing but the dumb gift. I mean, you're, you're the greatest man in the world. Why did you do that last thing? Last man. Last man, for me, please. Upon emerging from the cellar, Whitey discovered that it was hopeless to seek help for Lightning Jim close at hand. All about him lay a scene of havoc and confusion. Cries of distress rent the darkness. Pinning his hope upon the slim chance that the garrison might have escaped destruction, he started out. Half blinded by the heavy downpour, tumbling and groping in an uncertain passage among the wreckage strewn in the wake of the savage tornado, he pushed doggedly toward the army post. At the gate, he was accosted by the sentry. Hi there. Half a moment, lad. What's the other? Oh, let me pass you crazy food. I come for help. Now, come in. Let's in. Yes. I mean, Jim, man. Eh? Oh. Never heard of him. I've got new orders not to. Oh, oh who goes oh, there? Oh, oh, oh. I don't see you, Toto. Hey, Colonel, still make this pint size cock me half the chicken skin and thought to my ribs, will you? Oh, uh, wait a bit. Why, yes. Give me square ready. Oh, no, 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 uh, they knew it the post office. Uh, I didn't know that. Turn up here, I come for help. Lightning's leaning back in a cellar at the headquarters all alone. He's been hurt. Lightning's Jim injured? He is it serious? He, he's bleeding bad from me. He's got the big cut on his head. He saved my life, Colonel Steele, and know him. He, he might be dying. The army post of Fort Anderson had lain outside the direct path of the tornado and thus had escaped to some extent the destruction which had claimed almost every home and building in the town. A portion of the barracks had been swept away by the wind, but enough had been left standing to provide shelter for the more seriously wounded of the townspeople who were being brought in by the dozens for medical attention. Into this crowded confusion, stretcher bearers carried the unconscious form of Lightning Jim, and Major Bowman, the grave and kindly old army surgeon, deserted his other patients to give the famous marshal immediate care. Weakened by exposure and loss of blood, Lightning Jim's condition was critical, and the conscientious surgeon was able to say no more than that the next few hours would tell the story. Whitey, are you here? Yo, I'm here, Lightning. Oh, you see me now. Oh, my head. Where are we, Whitey? Well, what happened? Yeah, that's the no Lightning. We're at the garrison. We were first here in the tornado. Oh, yeah. Now I remember. Whitey. What about thunder? Oh, thunder's all right, Lightning. She didn't get a scat. Oh, thank God. I, I need the heat of that animal. Oh, I, I know. How are you feeling, Lightning? <laughs> I don't know, just Colonel Steele. Just come to her, I reckon. So, uh, Whitey, uh, can I speak to you in a minute? Oh, sure. Uh, let's go in my office. We'll be right back, Lightning. I'll have me... Uh, uh, hold on, on, Colonel. What's up? Why, uh, why... I never get all lightning. I, I just wanted to see you yeah, fighting. Well, you it? ain't fooling me, Colonel. What is it? Now, listen, Lightning, you're a sick man, and Whitey can take care of what I want. Well, yeah, I'll be sicker yet if you don't satisfy my curiosity. I know something's up. Well, you can't do anything about it, so you might as well know. The jail was partially destroyed by the tornado, and two of the Star Gang escaped during the confusion. Did Bell Star get away? No. She was slightly injured, and one of the gang was killed. The great uh, leader in Russ Finn stole a couple of horses and was seen heading for the border. Why, this is got to go after him. Lightning, I ain't going to leave you till the doctor says you are all right. Thanks, partner. But I'm hard to kill. I'll be all right. You're a marshal, Whitey. Duty comes first. Oh, I know. But I hate to leave you, Lightning. Uh, say, Colonel, could you spare a man to go with me? Oh, uh, yes, yes. Get your horse and come back to the post. I'll have a man waiting at the north gate. Uh, listen, Whitey. They 
Marmory's got a good head start on you. Better take thunder. Thunder? Like you, you mean that I can write thunder? Yeah. But don't let nothing happen to him, Weddy. And go on. Get going. <laughs> Well, what you stopping me for this time? I ain't stopping you, sir. I'm going with you. You are going with me? You mean that you're the man that Colonel Steele said uh, to work the shop with me? Yes, sir. Corporal Hawkins, at your service, sir. Well, uh, for the rotten law. Hold on, sir. Uh, you ain't got no call to feel that way. I was only carrying out orders when I stopped you a while ago. Oh, well, that's course. Uh, you say your name is Hawkins? Yes, sir. Hawkins it is, Marshal Larson. Well, right, Mr. Man. No, come on, we got the time to leave. Come on, Thunder. Well, Whitey seems to have no premonition of the danger into which he so gallantly rides. What happens when he meets those murderous bandits, Jake Leader and Russ Finn? And what of the notorious Bell Star? whose threat to escape has caused Lightning Jim such concern. The story unfolds in part two of The Adventures of Lightning Jim, which follows immediately. Now for part two of the adventures of Lightning Jim. It's the morning following the tornado, and Whitey and Corporal Hawkins are following the trail of the escaped outlaws. While back at the army barracks where the injured were brought for treatment, Lightning Jim is talking to Bell Starr, who occupies a neighboring cot. Well, at least a man whose life was in the balance less than eight hours ago. He seemed pretty tipper. Yeah, Bell. An old saying, the tail keeps a good man down. Now, a good woman either, Marshal. Don't forget that. Not a threat to escape, eh, hey, Bell? Take it any way you like, Lightning. By the way, since we've got a lie here with nothing to do, I'd like to know how you got into this your business of horse stealing and bank robbing. Well, your interest is flattering, Lightning, so I must say your description of my career is somewhat lacking in delicacy. I heard you was a Confederate spy during the war. That right, Bell? Yes, Lightning. Oh, it was wonderful. Thrilling, exciting, utterly different than anything I'd known in my stupid, dull, small town existence. It gave me a taste of what real living could be. Same old story, eh? Like the James and younger boys. You just couldn't settle down to decent living after this war was over, hmm? That's just about the size of it, Lightning. And like that just James and Cole Younger, I served under Mr. Quantrell. You don't come to think of it, I did hear you were the Quantrell spy. Colonel McDougall over at Fort Benton. But tell me he had had a run into you when he was just a non com Seven under Major Enos down in southern Missouri. Yes, it was the first day of that encounter with my studio that I had my first ride with staff as a saddle contender. That's so, Bill. You see, Lightman, Quantra was in pretty desperate straits at that time. Mm-hmm. He was operating a pitiful little company of 50 men in a territory that literally teamed with Union soldiers and militiamen. And he was badly in need of supplies and ammunition with which to carry on. I see. It was up to you to find out where he could get his hands on them things, huh? Yes, Lightning. That was my job. Well, Major Enos was stationed in the town of Antonia. So I went up there, herded with one of his soldiers, and got the information I was asking. <laughs> well, the getting sounds simple enough, but what about passing that information on to Quantrell? That was the hard part, Lightning. <laughs> I knew Quantrell was trying to get a man through the federal lines, and that if successful... That man would be waiting just outside of the town of Carthage for me to bring him the information. Mm-hmm. The next morning, as I was starting for Carthage, 
Now, see, Jerry, he's a sergeant at that time. Stop. Is it too late, is it? Well, no. And it's very early in the morning for a last to be right note. Well, good morning, Sergeant McCoover. I'm just on my way to Crawford's and it's a long ride, so I hope you'll excuse me if I don't stand around tall. Well, I'm sorry to have to detain you, Miss Bell, but the fact of the matter is, uh, Major Enos wishes a word with you. Well, I have to tell the Major I just couldn't stop today, Sergeant. Tell him I'll see him the next time I come to Matonia. Now, if you'll kindly take your hand off my bridle, I'll be on the way. I cannot do it, Miss Bell. The order is that to bring you to the major and bring me, I must. Why, you impudent in Highland Beach. So I don't think I ever have to do that. Let's go, let's go. Stop it. Didn't do that. Yeah, I heard a lot about that trigger temper of yours, Bill. Well, it didn't do me any good that day, Lightning. Mm. I was taken to Judge Richard's home where Major Enos questioned me a bit about my brother Ed, who was a captain under contract. And then he left me locked in the car. Oh, so it's you again, is it? So all to stop? Well, what do you want now? Them rebel tunes you've been banging out for an hour past. The major said they could tell you they were fair driving him mad. <laughs> That old Yankee fool doesn't have enough brains to go mad with. But I'm glad to know my music's annoying him. And you can tell him for me that it'll stop as soon as he sets me free. And not a minute to pause. Well, that don't sound much like the official arrest of a war spy to me. Oh, I hadn't been arrested as a spy like me. No? Major Enos hadn't found out about my spying operations at that point. Oh, I see. I was being held for another reason. I found out about an hour later. You call that screeching bad pipe caterwaul and music? Well, it's true. I cannot play as good as so, but come on, have a rest to defend yourself. It's just the major in charge tonight. Okay. Where did it go? It must be the major calling me. And coming for it. to go the move. You mean I'm free? I'm free to go to Carthage? Hey, you'll be free to go to Carthage, lass. But should you meet a detachment of Union cavalry on the way, be certain to take a good look at their prisoner. I'll bet you a Yankee dollar to a rebel once will be Captain Ed Shirley, he said. Oh, your brother Ed was the man that Quan Fell had sent through the federal lines, eh, Bell? Yes, and I was simply stranded, Lightman. He'd been seen somewhere along the route and recognized. But by some miracle, he escaped capture and made it through the cottage. Learning this, Major Enos had dispatched a cavalry troop to surround his hiding place and take him prisoner, dead or alive. Yeah, but that cavalry troop had a good hour, two hours start on your bell, and Carthage must be 35, 40 miles from Newtonia. Surely you couldn't do nothing to save your brother's life. Carthage was 35 miles by road map, Lightning, and that was the route the troop took. I knew a shortcut across the hills. I know there were federal pickets at intervals all along the countryside. I determined to get to the carpet ahead of that troop at that time. Come on, Tony, right there. Oh, look out there. They started us there. That's the case. One of the bullets creased through his flank, 
but I kept on. Mile after mile was old. Poor little mare. But she didn't already know about cherry switches. I taught her that day. But I made it, Lightning. I got through in time to warn Ed. When that cavalry troop rode into Carthage, my brother was well on his way back to Quantrell's camp with information that made possible one of the most successful and daring raids of his career. A raid that cost the Federal thousands of dollars and the lives of over a hundred men. Well, Bill, all I got to say is that the shame you didn't turn that kind of courage to a good cause when the war was over. They used to ride in the plains with a band of murder and cutthroats. Trying to convert me to decide a law and order, Latin? Well, maybe so. <laughs> well, how about you making the first guess soon? Having these handcuffs taken off me. They annoy me. Yes, sorry, Bell, but they'll have to stay on till the jail's repaired. And they're safe behind bars again. You might take it into your head to try to escape, you know. When I get ready to escape, Latin, you may be sure a little thing like a pair of handcuffs won't stop me. <laughs> In the meantime, many miles south of Fort Anderson, Whitey and Hawkins forced their weary horses along a rocky trail. Two thunder. Two boys. Say, Hawkins, take a look at this track. He ain't more than an hour old, by God, Oh, boy. Uh, what you say, Whitey? I say this track just like this, Hawkins. That means you ought to spot those jaspers as soon as we get out to this fort. Hope you're right, Whitey. Last day of blimey eyes for leading us such a sight. I think his blooming saddle is going right onto the seat of his pants. Oh, I reckon it ain't so much fun to spend 60 hours in the saddle than you ain't used to it. But we got to keep on riding just to see him. Get up, Thunder. Come on, Hawkins. We'll take it kind of slow going out to the fort. We'll go as fast as we can. The sooner we meet up with them bloody flying fish, the happy at all, be. Bring him out loud, baby. And don't try no funny business either. Steady, Thunder. Keep the boy. It is them blight as we do climb. Yo, and you got the drop on it. Yeah. You can't just out blow your britches, Steve, when you started up the gate leader. You ain't lightning Jim, you know. Yo, and that's a lucky thing for you, I ain't, Dick. That gives you a couple more weeks to live. Get the guns, right? Yeah. Feel good for any hideout weapon, too. You ain't taking no chances. Yeah, leave it to me, Dick. Yeah, it's the end of the trail for you two, King Stars. We're taking you back in them caves and drilling you. And it'll save us the trouble of burying you. Well, they're done, Mr. All right. Now get down off them horses, you two. Grab a couple of stocks of that there candlewood. It'll do for torture. <laughs> so we can see our oh, targets better, eh, Jake? <laughs> hey, that you run torches, Jake. I always thought that poor cat could see in the door. Then up, Swede, and do as you're told for I lose my patience and decide to kill you the hard way. Yeah, uh, let's all look like it, old man. Uh, we got to keep our eyes peeled for us and to yump this two poor cats. Hey! I didn't tell you to pull up the whole desert. Get back here and get quick. Hold your horses, will you? I bet you haven't got no guns, Whitey. Look, what end of it? Uh, that's the candle, you? Yeah, it's about time. Now, uh, start walking. Don't make a false move or I'll let you have it in the back. Come on, Rex. Yeah, Dave. Thanks, Charlie Hawkins. I never thought I'd be walking at the head of my own funeral procession. Blimey, it's dark in this cave, Whitey. I don't see why that sniveling bloody weasel didn't kill us out there in the open. It ain't Christian to walk a man into his own tomb, it ain't. That's far enough. Now, let them torches and turn around, my baby. Hey, what's that? Some kind of animal. Look at that, Whitey. Whitey. Yo, you can see their eyes. Wait, them torches, you fool! You, you, you do it, Whitey. My, my hands are shaking. Oh, that's the mess. Who just my gun? Look at that. Oh, we've gone into a den of man's lions. Watch out. Oh, quit waving your torch, please. You're fucking an island. Yeah, those devils take a lot of... Get off the gun. Get off the gun. Oh, it's a yes, but... Oh, it's a yes, but... No, no, you can't get your shot. I'll fight you. I'll get 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 you. I
No, come on and help me drag this sleeping beauty off of her. She's got the deep and foot and the skin, the prince Dorman, the hangman. <laughs> Why do you, man? Yo, that's me, Larson. See how you feel, you know. Oh, never mind me. You got them. Yo, we got them all. Good right. work, Whitey. Well, now we got all the prisoners together again, huh? Yo, they're all over the way. Well, all except in Bell. Bell? Bell Star ain't at the jail? No, they rest and said she was still her dormy post. Uh, head spring dance in a storm. She was here, Whitey. But as soon as they told me the jail had been repaired, I told the turnkey to take Bell back and put her behind bars. But that was two hours ago. The turnkey? Yeah. Yeah, well, see, that reminds me. I have a note for you. Uh, the turnkey left it with the Leary stable man, and he told him not to send it over for a couple hours. Well, I'll be doggone. She's done it, buddy. Bell Star's escaped. Escape? Yeah. Listen to this. Dear sir, I hope you will excuse me for what I am about to do. Bell Star is a real lady, and she tells me she is a widow, too. She wants me to settle down to a new life and joy and happiness. So we are eloping in place of me taking her back to jail. Truly yours, John Harder. Thank you, Fort Anderson Jail. Well, I'll be a monkey, Uncle. Yeah. Bell Star eloped with a turn. Yeah. Let me find me. Just what happened. Bell Star is a thief. Yeah, so we just found out. Eloped with a turn. Eloped, eh? Yeah. Well, all I've got to say is that it was sure a short honeymoon for him. Huh? Uh, well, uh, oh, oh, steady. Uh, has the turn she been taken in already? Taken in is right. Taken in by Bell Star. How? He was just found lying on the ground about ten miles out of town, clubbed over the head. And so ends another chapter in the lives of Lightning Jim and his faithful deputy, Whitey Larson. Mm-hmm.